Hi, this is the introduction to the spreadsheet for pre-calculus. And what we want to do is create an exponential model on Excel, which is another name for the spreadsheet. Or you could use uh, something in Google, but Google isn't as powerful. <clears throat> you can use OpenOffice if you don't have uh, uh, Microsoft Office Excel. All right, what we want to do is model this problem. Singapore has a 2% growth rate in its population. Presently, there are 5.31 million people. What we want to do is try to take the spreadsheet and see what happens to the population over the next 10 years or even 20 years. On the spreadsheet, then, we can, re we can set this up two ways. One is do it recursively. Recursively means that we're going to take the population each year, and we're going to just put this growth rate on the pre previous year and do it over and over again. We also can do it explicitly defined. Explicitly defined means that we have an overall formula for the year after 2012. And with that, we can plug in how many years past 2012 we are and find out what our population will be. So on the spreadsheet, here's some of the things that we'll go through. Uh, if you use control squiggle, this changes back and forth from formula view to number view. The equal sign will always start a formula fill down, we can grab the handlebar, and I'll show you that in a little bit, and what we'll do is it will increment your formulas as you do fill down. Fill right does the same thing, except for it will increment the letters rather than the numbers. If you don't want things to change, then you use the dollar sign. The dollar sign will fix this cell name so that we don't get changes all the time. So let's go to the spreadsheet. On this side, I'm going to do the recursively defined formulas, and on this side, I'm going to do the explicitly defined. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a title, year after 2012, okay? So what we want to do is probably start at zero, and then we want to go to one. Now we're going to use the power of the spreadsheet. I'm going to show you the fill down function right now. Instead of calling this one, two, three, and so on, uh, on down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is equal to this cell, which is A4. Cell name, here's the 4, here's the A. So A4, and I'm going to add 1 to it. And if you notice, it just becomes one more. Now if I take this handlebar, that's this little square down in the corner, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to go down as far as I want. And if I look at that, there I go down to 20. I wanted to go down to... 20, so there we go. So here's the year after 2012. You can change these columns by grabbing right here and sliding it over. And I'm doing this on the Mac, so let me show you a couple things that you can do to help yourself out. I have this formula bar up here, and what you can do is go into uh, View, and under View, Formula Bar. Make sure you check that so you can see that. Because then you can see, click on a particular cell, I can see what the formula is in that particular cell. That's nice to have. Uh, if you have a PC, that shows up automatically. Also, with this one right here, I don't like how this is formatted, so I go to Format Cells, and I try to do Alignment, and I want to wrap that text. So if I wrap that text, there it is. Then if I can split this cell, I can do different things. But that's besides the point. Now what we want to do here is we want to put in the actual population. So what we start off with, uh, I would put 5.31 million uh, or 5 written out, but I just want to put 5.31. And we'll remember that this is in millions. Otherwise, I get too many decimal places. If you're getting a bunch of uh, hash marks or pound signs, what you can do is that just means that the number is too big for the cell. You can double click on this and it will shape it to the right size. So there's my population. Now recursively defined means that we base it on the previous cell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the previous cell and I'm going to multiply it by what value? Well, I can do it a couple ways. I can multiply by 0 0.025, which is 2.5%, but I need the 5.31 million people back. I don't want just to know my add-on. So what I'm going to do, and you've got to use the multiplication symbol on Excel. They won't accept it without. I'm going to go a 1 plus 
0.025. What does the 1 plus do? Well, the 1, that means that B4 is my 5.31. It takes my 5.31, keeps it, and then this puts on the additional amount, the 0 0.025. So we just distribute amongst that. So if I look at this, my population went up. Okay, you shouldn't be telling me that this went up 100, or uh, my population's now 100,000. No, I, I didn't lose that 5.31 million people that we have there. So this is called a recursively defined formula because it's based on the previous cell. Now, what can I do? Well, through the magic of fill down, I can just go like this and fill this down. And I need to go a little bit more with my scrolling. And I can fill that down there. Beautiful. So in 20 years, we should be at 8.7 million people. Woo! Growing fast. Okay? That's if they keep to their standards and what they want to do. So if I do this control squiggle, this is next to the one. What will happen is that I should get, there it is. I should be able to see all my formulas. And now if you notice, all of these formulas are based upon the previous term. And so that's what happens here. And so if one of these changes along the way, then everything after that will change as well. So that's what we mean by recursively defined. One cell builds on another, builds on another, builds on another. For an explicitly defined formula, what happens then is that we're going to build it based on the year, and we're going to have to use an exponential function to do this. So we're going to do year after 2012, same thing as we did before. Oh, I don't like it like that, so I go format cells, and I wrap the text. Might be a little bit different depending upon the computer you're using on. And here, I'm going to show you a different way to set this up. You can go 0, and you can go 1, and you can set the pattern. And you can even do two or three, but then you highlight those. Now the computer is going to recognize that pattern, and when I do this fill down, it's going to do the pattern over and over again. Now if you notice in my formula up here, there is no formula. And so what happens is that we just don't have a formula. It just followed that pattern. Okay? Now, and then if I want to, I can shrink this up a little bit. Then here, I can do my population. And so I'm going to start off with 5.31 again. Now, what happens with this, and I'm going to extend this a little bit, I'm going to put in what we call a formula. So I'm going to go equal to 5.31 is my initial population. But I'm going to follow this with my exponential. I need a times again. So times 1 plus 0 0.025. Bear with me. Thank you. And what's going to happen is that I'm going to raise this to the year that we have. And now if you notice, the year is D4. So there's what we have. There's my formula. Okay. So if I look at this, what is D4? Well, D4 is raised to the zero power. So when I hit enter, what am I going to get? Do I got to click on here? There we go. I'm going to get 5.31 because of my exponential here. This is because of my exponential here. If I raise it to the zero power, this whole term is going to go to one. Okay. Now, what do you think I'm going to do with this formula now? How about fill down? Let's try this and see. If we fill down, look at what's being incremented. This thing right here, this D4, goes to D5, goes to D6. What does that mean? Well, that means that I'm applying this rate, or this factor, two times. Down here, this factor right here is being applied three times. And then also, if you've established your pattern to fill down easy, you can double click on the handlebar and that will fill it down too. All right? So there's all my formulas. I didn't get down here far enough, so I'm going to click and drag this a little bit more. And there's my 
spreadsheet. Now, how does that compare to the one on the left? Wow, look at that, exactly the same values. Now the difference here, if you're not recognizing it, I don't know if you are or not, but if I take this number right here and I put in 40 years, that will not change my values of my population because I'm just building on the previous one every time. If I change this one to 40, however, watch what happens. Yes, that will change my population because it's just taking 40 and that saying what's happening 40 years after the year 2012, what's my population estimate, okay? So this is because this is explicitly defined. Now the rest of these did not change because I didn't base uh, the years on a formula. So that's what's happening there. So now I can answer my questions. After 10 years, we'll be about 6.8 million people, and after 20 years, we'll be about 8.7 million people. Now, I want to show you the power of the spreadsheet here, though. Uh, let's take this, and we can click on this cell, and what I want to do is I want to go insert, and I want to ins insert rows. And so if I insert rows, it will do that, and if I do Control y or Apple Y, I guess, I can just insert more and more. It will just repeat the function that I just had. So what I want to do is make this spreadsheet more pop, uh, powerful. So if I take the population and put a heading here, that's the population. And then if I put a growth rate, what I'm going to do is in each one of these cells, I can put my 5.31. And then here, I can put in 0 0.025. You can format the percent and stuff, but I don't want to do that quite yet. Now, the power of the spreadsheet is that I can take this value here. Instead of calling this 5.31 in the body of my spreadsheet, I can steal this value. How am I going to do that? Well, I can go now equal a, a B4. Oh, I didn't change my spreadsheet. What, is, what happened? What happened? What if I put in 5.5? Look at that. It changes all the values automatically. Is that beautiful or what? Woo! I like it a lot. Okay? So that changes it very easily. And I can do the same thing over here. I can say that this is, um, here's my formula up here. I can go and change this to B4 instead. I can just type in B4 instead of clicking on it. And then there it changes. And it changes my whole spreadsheet. No, it did not because I didn't change my whole formula. So what I want to do is I want to fill this down. Uh, let me go to formula mode. But what do I not want to have change? Well, I need the population the same every time. So what will happen now is that I'll take this B4 and I'll put a dollar sign in front of the 4. And what happens now is that when I fill this down, remember I can just double click on this now. Look at what changed. The 8, 9, 10 over here changed, but the B4 did not because that was my initial population. So I don't want that to change because this one is explicitly defined. And so let's see what happens. Now my values are all the same. Okay. Now with this growth rate, I can do the same thing. Plug it into these formulas. This one doesn't have a growth rate involved. This one does. Instead of putting in 0 0.025, I can put in this cell. Hit enter. Then I still have to fill down. Now I'm running into trouble with my values. Let me see what I did here. What did I forget to do when I did fill down? Oh, that's right, I forgot the old dollar sign. So I need to put that in. And then when I fill down, this should work. And now I change this one over here too, and I can just fill this one down and watch. The E4 did change, the rest of this did not change. All right, so what we, we've done is we've set this up in a couple different ways. So now I can type in U.S. population, which is about 311 million, with a growth rate of 0.9. And there we have it. All right, thanks a lot. Take care. I hope that this helped you.
sorry, 0 0.009.